Hello and welcome to the Adobe channel. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe, and it's my pleasure to stream to you for the next hour on ebooks and then the following hour on Lightroom. Uh, if you're watching the video on demand or replay, thanks for catching the replay. You can always catch my shows live on Tuesdays and Fridays um, from 10 a.m. till noon Eastern time. So you'll have to do your time zone conversions. Um, but it is just now a couple minutes after the top of the hour and uh, we're going to be doing uh, two parts. Uh, so part one will be a, uh, a, um, a conversion of an ebook to a fixed layout. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to kick off another learning stream at the 11 o'clock hour. So I did a 10 part learning stream on intro to Photoshop. So it was 10 episodes uh, twice a week, so five weeks worth. And now I'm gonna do an eight episode uh, intro to Lightroom. So it'll be for the next four weeks. So basically till around the end of May. And uh, unless there are some scheduled um, interruptions, but otherwise it should be every Tuesday and Friday from here to the end of May, we'll go from, in, we'll go from Lightroom very beginning how to import images starting today, catalogs and all that stuff, all the way through to uh, the whole workflow in Lightroom. So that, again, if you want to stick around for that, that's going to be at the 11 o'clock hour. But if you're here for eBooks, which that was the tweet that went out earlier, that's what we're going to do first. So let me tell you a little bit about the, the setup that we're going to do today. Um, a good friend of mine, Victoria Pavlov, uh, just wrote her, uh, I believe it's one of her first books or her first book, and she published it as an ebook on Amazon. And there are two types of ebooks. Um, the one that most people are familiar with, like if you have a Kindle or you're using a Kindle app, it's called it's what we refer to as a reflowable ePub. That means that no matter what size your device is, and let me kill my notifications here, no matter what size your device is or your screen. Uh, the EPUB or ebook will reflow to the size of the screen. So the text will, if you turn it sideways, the text will go from left to right all the way over. If you turn it portrait, the text will just rewrap and go um, uh, to the smaller screen size or the smaller width. And that's fine for reading text, no problem. And her ebook looks great for reading the text. However, what happens in that case is that. Um, the formatting, meaning of the graphics and placement, the layout, falls apart. Because typically in a reflowable document, you're not controlling where things are. So when the text reflows wide, whatever images may have been next to something get reshuffled around and it may not always be the best fit. So, and again, that was fine for the Amazon bookstore and the Kindles because uh, some of the earlier Kindles can't handle fixed layout. So now what I've decided, what I'm what I've, what I've going to help her do is get the book in a fixed layout format in InDesign so that it can be published to the iBook store so that it would be in a fixed layout format. And there's no reason not to have your books in as many places as you can sell them. So that book's going well on Amazon. I'll show you guys a link to it in just a minute. As a matter of fact, we'll put a link in the chat. And um, then we'll go and we'll get it ready so she can publish it to the iBook store as well. So that's the task today. Let me, uh, let me give some ground rules for those of you who are watching the video on demand or, or watching me live here. So if you're watching the video on demand, you got to remember this is a live show. So that means I have to take time and look over at my other screen and say hi to people in the chat and answer questions and things like that. So I know some people are watching the video on demand. I was like, well, who's he talking to? You know, what, what's this person? Is this person in the room? No, they're in the chat in Twitch. Uh, so let me, um, let me go down here real quick and just see if I missed anything. Hey, Paul. Hey, Idaho. Um, yes, Lightroom for Beginners. I know. Servant 2000. Hello. Yes, you did make it. And let me turn my notifications off on this device as well. And I think I saw everyone. The old lion. Hello. Hey, Dream Float Joe. Uh, hey, Pearl. Pearl Cream Cheese. How's it going? And uh, I think that is everyone. All right. So let me do this. Let me. I'm going to show you my computer screen in just a minute. 
but let me get something up on the screen before I switch over. Let me go to my browser. Let me go to Amazon. I always have the wrong keyboard chosen. Let me go to Amazon. And I'm going to show you this in just a second. Bear with me. I'm bringing up Amazon real quick. And let me type in the name of the book. So that way you guys will know what the project's going to be. All right, got the book up, and let me also grab it. I think I can put a link in the tech in the chat here. So I'm going to put a link in the Twitch chat for those of you who are live, and then I'll um, show it to everyone else, especially for the video on demand. So let me do that real quick. All right, so I put the link to it in the uh, in the Twitch chat. So if you guys want to pop over to Amazon and take a look at what we're doing, this is this is what the book looks like. And now let me show you guys on screen what we're going to be doing today. All right, so uh, this is the book. It's called Digital Painting for Photographers. Uh, like I said, it's a Kindle book right now. And just like they say, you can read this on any device. So even if you don't have a Kindle... Because uh, a lot of people are confused by that. They, they see a book on Amazon that's in Kindle format, and they think, oh, well, I can't, you know, I can't buy that book because I don't own a Kindle. Well, you haven't had to own a Kindle for years because Amazon was smart enough to figure out that not everyone's going to buy a Kindle, but they want to sell books. They want to sell books more than they want to sell devices. So they made apps for pretty much all platforms. There is a desktop version of the Kindle app. So if you want to read books on your computer, you can. There's an iOS version of the Kindle app, an Android version of the Kindle app, and i got to imagine, I haven't checked, but there's probably a Windows Mobile version of the Kindle app as well. So that way, no matter what your device is, if you want to buy books from the Amazon bookstore, you can. And so she published her book to the Amazon bookstore in, in a reflowable format, so it's text and image, text and image, so forth and so on. But we want to dress it up a little bit and convert it into a fixed layout that won't move around and take advantage of some of the things that we can do in InDesign, including interactivity, perhaps, and uh, you, she could even put movies in it. So if she had a tutorial about a particular tip, we could actually embed those movies right in the, in the fixed layout and they would play on the iOS devices that would buy the book in the iBook store. So um, having the book in both, both stores, great option. All right, so with that said, uh, that's the book. And it's interesting that they say it's 72 pages. I don't know how they're measuring that because it would depend on what device you're on. If you're on a smaller screen, it's more than 72 pages. If you're on a big screen, like a 30-inch display, it's less than 72 pages. So I'm not sure where they come up with that. But that's the book. Uh, you guys have now have the link. You can go check it out. And uh, once again, congratulations, Victoria, on your book. All right. And just checking the chat here to make sure I'm not missing anything. And glad Server 2000 got your got it back on for mobile. Cool. All right. So now let's go to InDesign and let's let's get started with the layout process. Uh, when you're in InDesign, you of course can lay out any kind of document for print, for digital, for web. Well, not really web, but <laughs> for online, I should say, online publishing. You can lay out any format you want. Uh, it's not a web design tool. I know a lot of people would love it to be, but that's why Muse exists. So what I'm going to do, hey, GobyJ69, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new document. I experimented with it a little bit yesterday just to make sure I, everything was going to work the way, kind of the way I wanted, but I didn't lay it out yesterday. So we're going to create a new document. And when you create a new document, this is the dialog you get from scratch in InDesign CC. And it's uh, a default preset. The intent is still defaulting to print because that's what, you know, InDesign was originally for. However, uh, you can switch that intent to web or digital publishing. Now, digital publishing, you might be thinking, well, isn't that for your DPS solution, your digital publishing suite? And yeah, that's what it was originally put in there for. But it's also a good starting point for uh, digital publishing. So when I, I'm sorry, for EPUB publishing. So when I go to digital publishing, that will give me various uh, digital sizes. So it gives me an iPhone size or iPhone sizes, gives me iPad sizes. It gives me uh, Android 
and Surface Book and Kindle. So see, that's what I mean. It's not just for DPS. It's giving me all these other devices. So now I could pick iPad or iPad Retina. I'm going to go ahead and pick, uh, I'm going to pick iPad actually. Even though the book would could be seen on an iPad Pro or whatever, uh, or I'm sorry, an iPad uh, with Retina display, that, that's more important for DPS than it is for EPUB because we're creating a fixed layout and I want the fixed layout to look best on a variety of iOS devices. So I, I can only pick one. So for example, if someone's reading that book on their iPhone, well, that's not as big as an iPad Retina. So I'm picking a happy medium here that was where when it scales it, because that's what fixed layout EPUBs do, they scale, they don't reflow, that it's kind of scaling up when it needs to and scaling down when it needs to in a happy format. So iPad is a nice, a nice medium setting to go with. And that's why it defaults to it. Now, it defaults to wide. And this is where I have to make a decision. I have to make a decision of, hmm, how will most people hold their devices when they're reading a book? So let's head over to the iBook store for a minute. And in the iBook store, I've got some EPUBs that I've created with InDesign, like the Play On one, uh, World Traveler, Happy Thanksgiving, my gadget guides from 2012, 2014. Those are all InDesign documents that I made into eBooks. But then there are actual books like the iPhone user guide and the iPhone book that uh, I co-authored. So that's actually my, one of my versions of my book. Um, and then there's Julianne Cost's window seat book. And this is a good example of what is possible and, and, and I kind of get ideas from what I might want to do from this book. So for example, when I double click on this book, it'll probably open up to the last page I was on. Yeah, that's what I figured. And let me go back to the beginning. I don't know how far I went in the book. Okay, can I just jump to the, uh, let's jump to the very beginning, the introduction. There we go. And then let's go back again. All right. So you notice that hers is uh, in the wide format. So if you imagine an iPad on its side, that's the format for this EPUB. And this is a fixed ebook layout. So that means that if we go to one of the inside pages, like the introduction, and we scale it, the content just gets smaller. It doesn't reflow. So that book stays that size no matter what. You can still highlight text, you can still bookmark things, you can still make notes, you can still do whatever the ebook app allows you to do, in this case iBooks, but it is a fixed layout, does, does, does not change. So the question becomes, is it, because you can't rotate it once, you, once you're done, that's it. So her book is landscape format all the way throughout. It does not turn when the person's looking at their device in portrait mode. It, you know, it's so it just gets skinnier and now you got space at the top and bottom. So if you're going to read her book in landscape mode, you're all set. If you're going to read her book holding your device in portrait mode, then you're going to scale it down. So let me ask you guys a question here on the chat. Um, when you're, if you read ebooks, do you read them in portrait or do you turn your device wide? I tend to read books in portrait on my iPad or my phone or whatever. I don't read them on my phone very much, but on the iPad. So let me hear from you guys in the chat. What do you normally do? Because this is a one-time decision for a book. You either have to make it wide or tall. You can't change it. You can't, you know, you can change it after the fact. You can re redo it. But once you publish it, that's the format it's in. Portrait. See, 69 like tur likes turtles. You're like me. Portrait, portrait, landscape portrait and Victoria says portrait and it's her book so that kind of answers that uh, so so far only one person said landscape wife and I both portrait see and I agree because it just feels more natural holding an iPad to read a book in portrait format as opposed to like this because then you almost have to use both hands all the time whereas in portrait you might be able to get away with one hand uh, depending on the mobile device, but portrait. Okay, so looks like the vast majority are saying portrait. There are a few landscapes, and I agree. Landscape's nice when it can rotate. Sometimes I will rotate the landscape, but if, if I only get one choice, 
I'm going to prefer that book be in uh, portrait mode. Now, there's a reason that I think Julianne chose landscape because her original book wasn't an ebook, it was a print book. And therefore, her original book was laid out like a regular print book with images on one side, text on the other, images on one side, text on the other. So, in her case, it probably made more sense to relay it out as an ebook in landscape mode because that's the way the original print book was. It was a nice wide print book. So I can totally see why she wouldn't want to have to redo all this to make it look good in portrait. It's already looking good in landscape, so why not? All right. But since we're starting out and we have a choice, we can go ahead and choose whatever we want. So that's what these look like. And again, if I were looking at this on a portrait device, it would just scale down, or a portrait orientation, it would just scale down and look smaller. So I'd have to pinch and zoom and pan around to see the text versus keeping it in portrait and having the text look bigger. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna quit iBooks. We're gonna go back here. And now we're gonna make that decision, and that's why I took you through that exercise. We're gonna make that decision here as to whether or not we're gonna do portrait or landscape, and you guys chose, overwhelmingly chose portrait, and I agree. I was going to choose portrait anyway, but I did want to see what you guys said. Uh, so with that, I agree it should be uh, portrait. And now the only other choice would be if you are creating the book from scratch, meaning you're typing the book as you go and laying it out, then you can go ahead and put in your total number of estimated pages. And of course, it's an estimate because you don't know. Like, I don't know how many pages her book will take up in an iPad portrait um, orientation. I don't know. So I could say, well, let's type in 72, so, since that's what Amazon said, or let's type in 50. But I, I don't know. It would be a guess no matter what I did. And you can guess and always add more if you need more or delete if you don't use them all. So you, you can type in whatever number you want. I'm going to leave it on one because I'm going to do something different. I'm going to leave it on number of pages one, and I am going to leave this, which I normally never have turned on, this primary text frame. And the primary text frame is, what it's designed to do, is put a master text frame on your master page, or a text frame on your master page. So that way you have a text frame that's the entire size of the page, and every page it creates with that master page, you'll have that text frame. Normally, I turn that off 99% of the time. This is that 1% where I want it on. The reason I want that on is because her book is typed in a word format, meaning she authored it in a word processor. Actually, she authored it on Google Docs. Um, and I edited it. I was a technical editor, so I did, did all the editing in Google. It was a shared Google Doc, so it worked out perfectly. Once that Google Doc was done, I exported it from Google Docs to a Word format. So the whole book is in, Word, in a Word document, pictures and all. And since it's one long continuous document, if you have a primary text frame, you can place that whole Word file on the first page and it will automatically generate all the next pages it needs, all the pages it needs. So that's why we're going to do it that way. Okay, so we'll click OK. We'll click OK. Well, before we click OK, one more thing. Do we need facing pages or not? Now, facing pages is typically what you would do in a book. You would have the cover, you'd open the book up, you'd have two facing pages. Left page, right page. And that's exactly what you would do for print. But for an ebook, like when we saw Julianne's book, you're turning the page, there is no left and right concept. You can, you can make it that way, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, for an ebook because people are just looking at one page at a time. They don't necessarily need to look at the left page when they're reading the right page or vice versa. So you can do it either way. Um, <laughs> yes, LC French. Okay, so now let's go ahead and I'm just making sure I'm not missing any comments here. All right, so now let's go ahead and say OK, and that will just give us our one page blank document in InDesign, and there it is. And now, and I have the master page showing, and or the pages panel, I should say, showing, 
and there's our one empty page and this is the size of an iPad screen and again even if you were looking at this book on a phone it's just gonna scale or you're looking on an iPad Pro it's gonna just scale bigger it doesn't matter which device which iOS device you're looking at this on it's just gonna scale and keep in mind when I keep saying iOS device that's because we're targeting this book for the iBook store we already have the book on the Amazon store so if you're on Kindle or or Android or Windows or anything else you can just go get the Amazon version so we're targeting this one specifically for the Apple store alright so with this in, with this in mind I've got page one there is that blank frame there I, I'm not clicking on it to see it or anything but it's there there it is and now it's and notice it's just one frame that's not connected to anything and there are no additional pages this is the only page here now here's a tip in InDesign and it's I think it's on by default but let me show it to you if you go to your preferences and you go to your type preferences there is a smart reflow option that was introduced I don't remember when I think around InDesign CS6 CS5 maybe uh, but the smart text reflow option means that it will auto, you can turn it on or off if it's on it will automatically add pages to the end of the story if you turn it off then it will just give you an overset ish situation and you'll have to manually add the pages but since it's on I don't have to worry about it all right so now that we got that preference confirmed that it's on now I can go to file in place and I gotta go find the ebook. Oh, there it is. I'm hey, it's, remember the folder. Okay, so it's in our shared Dropbox folder. And here it is. And what I want to do now is uh, grab this dot docx file. So that's a Word document. So when I open it, it's a big file, so it'll take a second. It it automatically added all the pages that it needs to make this book. So now, again, it, it's just dropped it all in. It's, there's no formatting. There's nothing going on. It's just, oh, you want a book? Here's your book. I'm going to lay out the, I'm going to drop the whole thing in for you, and you do whatever you want after that. So let's see how many pages it ended up being, even though it's not done yet. So 46 pages um, in its raw format. That's what we got. Okay. So 46 pages, and for example, like I can tell by looking at this, this is really two pages. This is, you know, this was spaced down and probably made it go over to the next page in the word processor, but technically I need to split this up into another page. We'll get into those tips and techniques in just a second. Uh, but there is one thing that's missing. We need the cover. The cover was always a separate file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a page. Uh, now I'm not going to use the A master in the pages panel because the A master is that master page that contains that master text frame. I don't need that. I just need a blank page at the top for the cover. So I'm just going to grab the none or blank page and drag it in in front of page one. So now it's the front, it's the top page. All right, let me look real quick just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Will this stream be available to watch later? Yes, it will. It's um, being recorded. <laughs> but even if I wasn't recording it, it's always available, at least temporarily, on the Adobe channel. So twitch.tv slash adobe slash profile. When you go twitch.tv slash adobe slash profile, you will see all the video on demands from uh, the past few months. Uh, my streams are also, when they are, when everything's working right, they're also archived to my YouTube channel at terrywhite.tv um, because then they don't expire. All right. Can't you just add a page before page one? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, there are various ways to do things in every application, but yes, I did. I just drug a page before page one. I could have said insert page. I could have... I've uh, done a lot of things. I could have used a menu option. I could have used a lot of a lot of various ways to do it. I can't show you every single way to show every single thing. So if you already know your way, do your way. Okay, uh, next. So we've got our um, our cover page, and now I want to go ahead and place the cover. Now again, I don't know if the cover is going to format correctly because an iPad screen is a little bit wider than the original screen size I think she did. But let's go ahead and do a place. 
and let's go ahead and grab the cover now the cover is in two formats it's in psd and jpeg <clears throat> psd is obviously the original editable file and the jpeg was the one that got uploaded to amazon so in this case we're just going to do the psd because indesign can place psd files and i can go ahead and start pulling this out and I can see that it's a little bit narrower than the um, page, which that's, I kind of anticipated that might be an issue. Now, the other thing you might notice, and this is just a regular InDesign thing, is that it looks kind of, oh my God, what's going on here? That looks horrible. That looks like 1984 type. What's going on there? That's because InDesign always defaults to a low-res preview or a low-res um, proxy. So to not have it look like that, you can right click if you really want to see what it looks like and display performance, high quality display. When you turn on high quality display, oh, look, it renders it. It actually shows you. Now, had I not turned on high quality display, it still would have printed and exported the EPUB uh, in high quality. It's just for while you're working on InDesign, it doesn't slow down trying to render every single graphic in a high quality display that you don't really need to see high quality. But if you need to see it, there it is. All right. Uh, this girl is beautiful. Yes, this is uh, a beautiful model that... Um, and by the way, this is not a photograph. This is an actual example from the book of her digital painting. So she painted this portrait uh, from her portrait that she photographed. So that is um, what the book is all about, is how to do this, this technique for photographers. Okay. So we got the book in place, but there's the problem of, well, it doesn't really fit. Okay, so here's what we can do. We can test, we can try it out. I can go ahead and make the frame the full size of the page, because that's what we need it to be. And depending on what might get cropped off, it may work. If it doesn't work, then I've got to go into Photoshop and do some extra work. But now that I've got the frame the full size of the page, even though the image isn't, because the image is a little narrower than an iPad screen, I'm going to go in and choose a fitting option. I can do it here on the control panel, or I can go to the uh, object menu and do it. I can go to fitting. And here's my favorite option. It's called fill frame proportionally. What that will do is fill the frame, not stretch the image, but it may and probably will crop the image because the image is not the same aspect ratio. But when I do it, I can still decide what part gets cropped. So let me go ahead and do it and let me see if I like it first. And there it is. So if I go down and look, oh, her name's getting cropped off. That's not good. That won't work, but we can fix that. We can go ahead and fix that in Photoshop. All I gotta do is move it up in Photoshop. Um, but what I'm more concerned about is the image itself. So if I go ahead and now I get the grabber hand, if I pull the image down so where we don't, we're not cropping her head off, now the only thing I have to go deal with is the typography in Photoshop because everything else looks okay. So we got the image to fit. We just lost some of the bottom. And if you hold down on this for two seconds, you'll see how much you lost. And if I go into Photoshop now and move things up, then we'll be good to go. This, will, this cover can still work. I don't lose, uh, I, I don't have to redesign the photo to fit, which I could do a content aware fill or content aware scale on the left side. Maybe that would work too, but let's go ahead and try it. So now how do I get back to Photoshop to, to work on this? If I right click, I can go ahead and say, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a different program. Uh, and hang on one more second here. I don't know if I move this around too much. There, oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Still looks like a little bit of white space over there. Let me do one more fill proportionally. Fill, 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 fill. There you are. Okay, there we are. Oh, I know what happened when I moved it down. Let me hold down my shift key. And that way, when I move it down, I'm moving it perfectly straight. I'm not drifting to the left. All right, now we don't have that white gap on the side anymore. Okay, so now I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key and double click. You'll notice that Photoshop is launching. And that is because when you Option or Alt double click, it will launch the original. So had it been an Illustrator file, it'd be launching Illustrator right now. 
since it's a Photoshop PSD, it's launching Photoshop now. And that will take me to the layered file, which I can now go in and make some adjustments to. All right, so we got the type on all the layers. And I can first and foremost just select all the type layers and move everything up. Now I'm going to make, need to make a couple more changes than that, but let's get everything up first. So if I move everything up to maybe about there, uh, then that should clear her name. And if I save this, so I'm saving the changes now, and I head back to InDesign, InDesign will update. It'll show me what it looks like. So even though I can go back and forth and work between Photoshop and InDesign because InDesign is link, linking to that PSD and every time I make a save, it will update and show me. Okay, so in this case, the name's been, the name's been preserved now. We got her name back in there. There's a space between digital painting for photographers and her name that worked fine on the Kindle version, but on this, I don't need as much space. So I can move down the rest of that text a little bit and let me go ahead and grab everything but her name. Let's put her name down here, by the way. Let's go ahead and grab the rest. And now using my uh, move tool, the letter V, we can just go ahead and move everything else down. I want to get, I'm trying not to have to size digital painting, but I may have to, because I don't like that D hanging off the edge. I may have to size it. So let me grab my um, Command T to free transform both those layers and just size it down just a bit. There we go. And I think her name can still have a little bit of space there. And if I save, I can go back and look. Come on, update. Let's see, let's go back. Did it save? Saved. Come on, Link. Update, update. Okay, we'll make it. We'll make it update. There we go. When in doubt, double click the link to force the update. Okay, so we got the update in place. Now keep in mind this purple line. That's just a guide. It doesn't matter. It's not going to print. Not going to be present when we export this. So it's okay that that's hanging a little bit below the guide because I'm not using that guide for anything anyway. So now we got the cover to fit perfectly on an iPad screen. Okay. All right, let's see. Why not do the typography in InDesign? Because it's already done. <laughs> you could. What I would have to do is turn off the layers in Photoshop and then I have to recreate all this in InDesign. It was already done. There's real, so it was faster for me just to move it than to start over again and do the typography in InDesign. But if you wanted to, absolutely. Turn the layers off in Photoshop, just have the image, and retype everything and restyle everything here in InDesign. So, totally up to you. All right. Um, so, let's save what we've done so far. And we're going to call it Digital Painting for Photographers. All right. So, we're saving the InDesign file. And now that we got the cover, we, uh, that's in place, we can just keep going and look at the rest of the book. Okay, so I saw someone mention this earlier, and now this is what that person mentioned is about to come into play. So someone mentioned, um, yeah, you're right, <laughs> better and easier. Uh, someone mentioned, I thought someone mentioned, no, you didn't. Someone mentioned style sheets. No, you mentioned layer styles. Okay, I was thinking style sheets. Uh, so, again, back to that question, yes, I could have done the typography and InDesign. And like I said, a million ways to do things, so whichever way you like better. Uh, but in this case, we didn't, but now we're going to talk about um, how I have a preview in my tablet. Okay, so there's a question. All right, two questions. Terry, was there a yellow triangle with a to-click to update? Yes, in the links panel, if... InDesign doesn't update the link automatically. It'll put a yellow triangle next to the link, letting you know that the image has been modified but has not updated. And if you double click that yellow triangle, then it will go refresh the preview for the latest link. Someone else is asking, how do I get a preview on my tablet? Well, if you wanted to see this on your tablet, there's a, the, probably the easiest way would be to export out an EPUB and load it right on your tablet. 
and then you'd be able to see it. So remember, at any given point in time, you can export out your progress as an EPUB and send it right over to your um, to your iPad, and it will open up in the iBooks app. So however you get it there, whether it's uh, Dropbox or iTunes or however you sync it over, you can always look at it in the iBooks app, uh, even without publishing it to the store. So remember, if we go back to iBooks, this is an EPUB that I did in InDesign that's not on the iBooks store. This is one that I just copied over, and I... Um, brought it into, uh, and by the way, that might be even a quicker way. I uh, brought it into the iBooks app and I can now look at this on my iPad. I can read it, navigate it, test it, do everything without ever publishing it to the store. So for wanting to look at it on your device, that's one of the easiest ways to do it. All right. Okay. Uh, going back, so now we're at the point of it's time to make some decisions on layout because now we're going to be doing fixed layout and we can do anything we want at this point. So I could uh, I could make this area more narrow and put a picture of the author there, even though she will hate me if I <laughs> grab one of her pictures right now. But we can make room for the picture that she approves to put there if we want. We can, of course, send this to the next page. Now, um, the one great thing about this being placed the way it was is that this is all continuous now. And uh, if I make something too short, it'll automatically shift up. But that's also the downside because you don't have these as individual pages that you can do whatever you want to do with. The only way to get these to be individual pages now, so for example, let's say I want to break the link from the rest of the document with this frame. And let me check this. I think this is the way I've always done it. If I cut this page, this this frame. Uh, yep, it's telling me if um, InDesign will insert the new pages. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So now that frame has been cut and everything else um, has been shifted. So that content got shifted back down to the next frame because I cut this page out. If I now paste that page back in, you'll notice that there's no link to it. So this is now independent of the rest of the book. It's also duplicated, so I'd have to go ahead and do, remove the content from here. But otherwise, I, I could also just simply break the link and then the rest of the book would all suck up to this frame. So I don't want that either. So there's not a graceful way to say now, okay, you've laid out 46 pages for me, thank you. Now, can you make them individual? <laughs> There's no make them all individual pages command. Uh, it would be a painstaking task of cutting, pasting, but it, it's cut and paste is not that hard. It's not that slow, uh, but you would have to also go remember to delete it from the next page because it just paste, it just flowed all that information down. So I'm going to not do it that way because I don't need to. So undo, 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 put it all back together. Uh, and now what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to say that we know that we want this content where it says many of you will ask. We know that that's a new page or another page. So here's what I don't want my InDesign users doing. I don't want you guys doing this. See all this space? That's not a good thing for anybody. That's not a good thing for word processing. That's not a good thing for uh, graphic design either. So what I'm going to do instead is just put my cursor before where I want this to start next the, the, or jump down to the next page and use InDesign's insert commands to make that jump to the next page. So if I go to the, um, I never remember where these are. There we go. Insert the, uh, under the type menu, insert break character. If you go to insert break character, you've got all these various breaks you can do. You can do a column break. So if you have multiple columns, make it go to the top of the next column. Frame break, we have multiple frames. Make it jump to the next frame. Page break, because um, maybe your frames are not set up as, as whole pages, so just go to the next page. Odd even break if you're doing left and right pages. So all kinds of things. So I'm just gonna do frame break. Make that content start in the next frame. That way, now I can do whatever I wanna do here and make this bigger, make it whatever, and that content will still start there. All right, so so for example, if I want to now change, by the way, 
let's let's start making some body um, font changes as well because it came over from the word processor in Arial 11 not one of my favorites <laughs> all right so we don't want it to be Arial 11 um, and size of the font really doesn't matter a lot because people can still override it in their ebook viewers. You can always increase the point size or decrease the point size of an ebook in the reader itself or in the app itself. Uh, so it's not critical that you get the size just right. And also, depending on the ebook reader, it may not even preserve your fonts anyway. Um, but we, we can at least get it looking pretty here and then people who can override it if they want to. So first and foremost, I want all of this type to not be Arial. So since all of the type is Arial, I can just select all right now and change it, or at least most of it was Arial. I can select all right now and change it to a different font. And we want something nice and clean and easy to read. Um, so one of my favorites sans serif fonts for this type of work would be, here, let me just go ahead and type it in would be Myriad Pro, oops, Myriad Pro. All right, Myriad Pro Regular is a nice, good, open type font to use. Now, as far as size is concerned, again, doesn't really matter because people can override it to whatever they want. So we'll just leave it 12 point. Normally in a regular printed book, 12 point might be too big, but in a uh, ebook where people can make it whatever they want, doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so we got Myriad Pro 12 point for everything else. Now, what I want to do is I want to start working with some style sheets. So that way, as I go through formatting the rest of this book, I don't have to worry about um, having to remember what I did for each thing. So, for example, this is our title, our subhead or byline, and our body text. So let's just, since we're in the, in the body text already, let's bring up our style sheets. And let me switch to a better workspace too. Switch to my Terry White workspace. And in my Terry White workspace, I probably don't even have it up there yet, but let's go ahead and do it. Let's do styles, let's do paragraph styles. All right, so we'll bring up paragraph styles. And there's some styles that are already here. We're not going to worry about those right now because we're going to make our own. We're going to make our own, create a new style, and we're going to call that new style. It called it paragraph style. We're going to call it new style body. Body. And we just want to make sure it's, it's what we want. We want it to be not based on anything, based on no paragraph style. And the next style will be the same. Myriad Pro. And what's it doing for color? That looks weird. That looks weird. Myriad Pro, letting, auto, good. Just making some more, uh, just verifying some things or what I want them to be. Character color. Ooh, see, it's bringing in that weird word character color. We don't want the word character color. We just want it to be black. All right, and again, make this any color you want. All right, so we'll make that character color um, black, Myriad Pro 12 point. Okay, so now that style has been set for, um, has been set up based on what I just did. So now I could go through, same thing, and make everything body style. And if I override, there we go. So now everything is set to body. Now I can go through and start making things that I want to be different, different. Uh, let me just quickly make sure I'm not missing any comments. All right, doesn't look like I'm missing any. Okay, so next thing, now let's get some headline styles going. So for example, um, I don't want this to be Myriad Pro Black 12 point. I want this to be different. So let's go ahead and make, or, I'm sorry, Myriad Pro Regular. I might want it to be Myriad Pro Black. Let's try that. Let's also make this much bigger. Eh, not crazy about it, but we're getting there. And of course, we might want the byline to be italic. And we might want a light italic for that. And we might want that to be a little bigger. Okay, great. 
And now let me go back to this headline. I'm not really psyched about it, but let's go ahead and see what else we can do. Uh, let's see. Let's go up here. Um, I kind of like this font. I don't know what this was. Let's go back to Photoshop. Do I still have it open in Photoshop? I do. Let's grab our type tool. Euro style bold. Okay, so let's do that. So let's do Euro style bold instead. Euro style bold type kit font. No problem. Let's do that. All right. Yeah, I'm liking that better because it matches the cover. All right. So now uh, the other thing I can do is I can also bring in um, that color for my um, headlines as well. So I can use those colors. Let's go use those. So for example, with this layer, the digital painting layer, uh, notice when that layer is selected versus the Victoria Pavlov layer. Oh, hang on. I get different color swatches here. So what I can do is switch to a library. Uh, I'll switch to my Twitch library. And I can say, you know what? I like that blue from that type. Add that swatch. Add that color for me. And I also like the um, whatever color her name's in. Add that for me as well. So now those colors have been synced to my Twitch library. So I can use them in other applications. So for example, if I go back to InDesign, I can say that I want this. And we'll go to our libraries. There they are. And there's the library panel. And I can say that I want, what I want, I want the blue. So I want the blue for that. And I want the um, whatever red color that is for this. Okay, so now I've got those colors. And of course, I can add them as InDesign swatches as well. But as long as they're in my library, I'll be able to use them everywhere. Okay, so I've got this in place. Uh, the next thing I want to do is save these as style sheets as well. So let's go back to the paragraph style panel. And notice what it did. It gave me body with a plus sign because it's saying... This isn't body anymore. You've done things. You've, you've changed the font. You've changed the size. You've changed the color. It started out as body, but now it's something different. So what I could do is I could say, you're right. I don't want this to be body anymore. I want to make a new one. And we'll make that new one called headline. And based on body? No, not based on body. It's based on everything I've just done here. Now, based on body simply means... You can have styles that are nested. So, for example, if it was body, it was everything body was, but a different color. So, if I go change the font of body, the font of headline would change, but the color would stay the stay, stay whatever headline is. I don't want that to happen. I don't want it being based on anything. So, I've got the style, the color, everything's in place. Uh, go ahead and do it. Make a new style called headline. So, same thing here. Uh, for the byline, and we're going to change that from a capital B, by the way. There we go. And we've got uh, this style as well, so let's go make a new style called byline. Or caption, or whatever you want. So, eh, I might use this for captions too, but we'll see. Uh, let's do byline for now. And again, I don't want it based on body. just want it based on nothing. Click OK. And now I've got that in place. So now as I go through my document, the reason we do these uh, headlines, I'm going to get rid of that table of contents, by the way. But the reason we do these headlines or styles is because now I can say, that's a headline. I don't know if this is a headline or not. No, it's not. But I can go through and just make the things that are headlines, headlines. And it'll automatically format them the way I want them to be. All right. Headline. So now I see a situation here where we're, we, we have a, a graphics issue, meaning that as these were typed into a word processor, they were just pasted in one after another. But now that we're in InDesign, we can actually make these look better. We can lay this out differently. And that's why we're doing a fixed page layout. So for example, these are all in here probably as inline graphics, I'm assuming. Yep, they're anchored in. So I'm going to cut that out and paste it back in. And now it's free form. It's not tied to anything anymore. 
So I can put this wherever I want it to be. I can make it bigger. I can do whatever I want. And I can also take the text that goes with it, cut that out, and make sure I'm not in that frame, paste it as a new frame. And so now I can put that wherever I want that to be. So I can make this design look the way I want it to look. If I wanted things to be bigger, which I don't know. Let me look at something quick on the links panel. Let me look to see. The links panel will give you information about the actual size and versus scaling. So this is like looks like it's been scaled. Effective PPI. So yeah, it's been scaled to 43%. So it's not the original size anymore. So we can actually go bigger on that. We can make that graphic bigger and easier to see. Um, so if I hold down my command and shift key, I can scale that graphic up and make that graphic still not even 100%, but make it a lot easier and bigger to see. So same thing here. This one scaled down to 43% as well. We can make these graphics bigger. And I can now see them better um, in the book. So, for example, we can put things side by side. We can put things wherever we want them to be. And we can, um, that's the, the point of fixed layout, is that this will not shift around. It will not move around when we publish the EPUB. Wherever you see it on the page in InDesign, that's where it will be on the digital page inside the ebook. All right, um, so what I would then do, because we're running low on time, we've got seven minutes left in the stream, is I would just go through and continue to make the fixes that we need to make here. So for example, um, I see that this is starting out what looks like another section. Uh, so in this case in the book, what I could do is, for example, here, uh, same thing. This could be scaled now to the full width of this page inside the margin area or not. Everything else will push down. That's fine. And then on this, where this would go to another page, I could actually insert those page breaks. So insert uh, break character uh, frame break. And now that's on the next page. And so forth and so on. Like that doesn't look right all by itself. So I need to figure out where that should go. Does it fit better here? Is there enough room for it? I think there is. So we can actually, and that should move up. There we go. We can let that move up all by itself. And so it's really just a matter of going through and reformatting the book to look better on this now bigger page in a fixed layout. Things that can be bigger, why not make them bigger, especially screenshots? Why make it harder for people to see if you don't have to? So now I can make that bigger. I still can go through here. And let's see. All right, so in this case, I may do some formatting that's a little bit differently. So for example, here's what, what I might do in this case. I might take this text or the frame itself. Here, let's do this. Let's take this text because uh, remember, we started out with a frame on every page. That's the exact same size. You don't have to live with that. You don't have to be stuck with that for the rest of your life. So for example, I can take this up <clears throat> and now it's been forced down to the next page, but I don't want it to be on the next page. I want to insert a smaller column of text on the left side. So I grab my link tool or I grab the link from that frame and now I can go ahead and create a new frame with just that text in it because the rest of the, rest of the object is still down there. So now I can take this object, cut it out and paste it in here where it goes where she's talking about those tools and maybe this maybe this does have to be a little smaller to accommodate that tool frame or that toolbar or i could say well do we really need to see the whole toolbar maybe i need to crop it on the bottom so total decisions are up to you on how you want to lay this out so we'll keep that laid out that way and we'll go push that on to the next page. We'll move that up a little bit more. There we go. And now she's talking about those options. That looks okay on that page. So it's just a matter of going through 
the rest of your document making those decisions. When you're done laying this out the way you want it to look, it's starting to come along, although we got a ways to go, certainly not going to finish it in this stream. I'm uh, just making sure I'm not missing an actual title here. All right. Um, but you would go through, do all your formatting, do all your styles, put images and graphics where you want them to be. And then when you're all done, you would just go up to your... Okay, yeah, I got to definitely format these two pages too. Uh, you would go through and, like, for example, here. It's just bugging me now that I'm looking at it this way. Here, we definitely don't need this to be that. So, for example, we can go ahead and push this around. We can also say that our headline does not hyphenate. So, you could turn off uh, the hyphenate option so we don't end up with weird headlines. Uh, but anyway, we can go ahead and, and maybe make this a column instead of um, just going all the way across the page and put some photos here. Because we can now. We can do whatever we want. And same thing here. Uh, this is kind of a description of the book. We can maybe put some more photos in now that we've got um, the, the ability to fix it the way we want or lay it out the way we want. All right. Uh, chapter two, one paintbrush jar. Our paintbrush jar, I think it was. All right. Let's see. Scott Kelby in the house. I think I see him here. All right. Good friend Scott Kelby, I think, is in the house. I think I saw you earlier. What's up, Scott? All right. So, um, and like I said, in two minutes, we're going to start the uh, Lightroom. <laughs> Scott Kelby's in the house. What's going on? Celebrity in the house. Everyone follow Scott. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and now show you one last thing before we pop over to the Lightroom stream. And uh, he's always in green for some reason. Not sure why. All right, but anyway, we're going to go to the file menu, export. Fi Actually, no, not export. Sorry, I want to do a save as. And when I do a save as, no, I do want to do an export. I thought so. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go, export. So when I do an export, I've got the ability to now choose fixed layout or reflowable. Reflowable is the one that this book is already in on the Amazon store where it reflows to the size of your screen. And again, that makes it more compatible with older Kindles. But on the iBook store, we don't have to worry about that. We can do fixed layout. <clears throat> and this every page of this document will look exactly like it looks in InDesign. If it's on a smaller screen, the whole page scales down. Nothing reshifts or flows around. If it's on a... Um, bigger page like a ipad pro 12 inch or uh, then everything just gets bigger so the formats now if they turn their device sideways then we get a portrait page in the middle of the screen so that's the trade-off um, but if i now export this out i'll get the options to tell it all pages what to do with the cover rasterize whatever use the first page which is fine with me and um, then I can actually go and look at this document once it exports on my iPad. So that's the way I would test it. So that's just a quick look at doing fixed layout ebooks. I'm going to save this. We'll continue this work. Um, and, and again, bring in some more things. But it's just rinse and repeat. Continue going down your document, making it lay it out or look the way you want. Maybe I want that title to go all the way across. Maybe not. So in that case, one last thing real quick. Let's say I do want that to happen. I can, um, by the way, you can link backwards. A lot of people don't know that. It's one of my old InDesign Jedi tricks. And I can link that backward and make that go across. I don't have to have that squinch down in that one column. And then I can still, and I can even override this and make this bigger if I wanted to. But either way. So do the layout the way you want the layout to be. Export out a fixed layout EPUB. And away you go. All right, so here's what's going to happen now. For those of you watching the video on demand or the replay, thanks for watching this first part. I'm going to stop the recording, stop the stream right now. And uh, you, those of you who are live, you don't have to go anywhere because I'm just going to start it right back up with a new title. So with that said, take care. Thanks for watching and stick around for part two, intro to Lightroom CC.